Okay, welcome back to the Slightly Dark Workbench. So what I'm going to show here, I need to get some transformer loads ready to move on the layout. And uh, this is not this is not going to be totally prototypically accurate for a Westinghouse transformer shipping in the mid-late 1950s, but it should be relatively close, and, and who's going to know besides me? All right, so what I'm starting with here, I have a... Inner Mountain New York Central flat car, which I snagged off of eBay. And for the load sitting there, that is an Artitech load. It's actually a you know foreign load. It's AEG, a European manufacturer. And the actual item number of this is is that focus there? 487801.57. Called Lading AEG Transformer. Or actually, it's called Transformator. <laughs> Love the Europeans. And this is actually not a bad little transformer load. You know, it's a, you know, smaller size transformer. Maybe, you know, I don't know, 5 MVA-ish in that range. Now, what I did, I obviously took it out of the, out of the box. I popped the bushings off. Because you can see they sit right there on the skid. And, and most likely, in my, they wouldn't ship these, the high voltage bushings, exposed like that. So I might put a crate on there. It could ship with it. That's not unusual at all. It, it's just a little strange that they'd be shipping them with the porcelains totally exposed. Not that they couldn't do it, and not that it's never happened. Uh, it wouldn't be bad at all if you just took this out and put it on a car and went on your merry way. That'd be fine. All right, time for a quick educational break. I was looking at this, and I realized that these high-voltage bushings, as done here, out of the transformer for a shipment, are really not correct. The reason being is on 99% of the bushings I've seen, and these are oil-to-air bushings, there is an internal part that goes inside the transformer that would stick down here right into my finger. Ouch. And these don't have that. So th these actually kind of make no sense. Uh, they're great for an external bushing. I certainly can take these, uh, carefully take them off of the, the wooden base here and use them for a transformer that's in service. But for shipment, they're not going to work. And the reason being is, again, nearly all the oil-to-air bushings that I've seen have an internal side, which is the oil side, sort of you know, in the internal side. Now, it's it's not saying the oil's all the way up. There's there's a there's a mi minimum oil level somewhere based on the bushing where the oil has to cover part of this, but not necessarily all of it. And then it goes through the cover or through a turret, which is a bushing adapter to get it outside. And then you have the air side of the bushing with the porcelains. Uh, this is circling, this is a capacitive tap for various uses. And then you have your connection to the power system or the customer's connection, whatever, whatever they're going to do with the power from henceforth inside the transformer. And uh, interestingly, this is a little bonus for y'all. This is actually a snip out of a 1955 Westinghouse Electric bushing instruction leaflet. <laughs> How's that for a prototypical and aerospecific information in a video man you just don't get that on youtube anywhere else <laughs> so there you go so this is why that bushing here you know again it's just showing the they're sitting on the crate here is, is really not correct because it's got to have the internal side this is not detachable it doesn't ship separately this is all made together uh, and fyi some more education inside here at the bottom do this there is either a bottom connection which is normally a it bolts on that uh, connects to the live part of the bushing with a flag on it where you bolt the leads from the coils up to it or it has a uh, inch inch and a half diameter tube basically that runs through the entire bushing where you feed the leads called a draw lead up through the internal of the bushing and it pins right below the cap up here 
So there you go. There's some additional extra educational goodness. So again, these aren't going to be right. This is what, this is a little bit more modern, but this is normally how these higher voltage bushings are going to be shipped. You can see they're in a crate. They're vertical. Here's the external part, the air part, the porcelain part. And then the flange is here. And then I know it's a little tough to see, but here's the internal portion here and here. So normally the bushings are shipped like this vertically in crates. Larger bushings, higher KV bushings, can and almost always are, just due to their length, shipped in a horizontal position in a crate. That is possible as well. But for the bushings that I'm trying to simulate on this particular transformer, they probably would ship in crates like this. So that's FYI. This is not going to work. And this will be great for a unit that's in service. I'm still going to save them, not get rid of them, uh, because of the fact that there's always an internal part. I shouldn't say always. I know forever and never are very, very long times. So anyway, there's an internal part, for the most part, on any bushing that has to be there. So these are not going to work. So I'm glad I pulled them off. Again, this, okay, now we can return now to our regularly scheduled programming after our little uh, educational break because, you know, that's that's what we do in this channel. We try to educate people, you know, the more you know. <laughs> I'm going to leave the three, they look like uh, PTs or something like that. I'll leave them there. That's fine. The conservator tank, I'll leave that there, uh, although it probably would be created, but maybe not. And then what I did, obviously the whole thing still comes off the flat car. I did weather the deck a little bit on the inner mountain car. So I very carefully pried this off of the dunnage and it comes off. And then you can see on the, the side of the radiators, my big fat thumb trying to point, you see that right there? You can see it has the AEG dress nameplate. Now I doubt it would be like that on the radiators anyway. But since this is not an AEG transformer, I just very carefully, with an X-Acto blade, pop them off. It's just a little bit there, but I don't think it'll be too noticeable once I get this painted up. A little bit of scratch in there as I took it off. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that by itself, and I'm going to airbrush it. AK Interactive Gen 3. AK-11187, strong, dark, blue. This is, see, it says transformer on it. This is what I found to be the closest color to the prototype in the in the mid-late 1950s of Westinghouse, GE, Alice Chalmers, and, and various transformer manufacturers. It's kind of a, a dark gray-blue. I've tried many, 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 many paints to match it. And this comes pretty darn close to my eye. Close enough, let's say. Again, I'm not sure who's going to squabble with me. <laughs> but because uh, all, all the photographs I have from that era, unfortunately, are only black and white. Uh, the color photographs uh, color photographs of a Westinghouse GE 1957-ish shipment transformer are rather hard to come by. But this is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and airbrush this, then I'll come back in and I'll, um, the low voltage bushings being exposed, maybe, or I could put a little crate around them as well. They probably would at least be wrapped in something uh, to protect them. Although I will say I have seen photographs, another load I'm working on here is a three phase OCB oil circuit breaker. This is just a uh, Shapeways or a, it's on eBay too, uh, 3D print. Not bad. You can see I got to paint it up a little bit more in the back in that era. So that that is the color I have for the bushings, and they have. I have seen photographs of them just on a car, especially three phase OCBs like this, just sitting on a car on a flat car, and away you go. Some I've seen the bushings wrapped, others I haven't. So I think whatever you feel like doing is fine. So if I decide just to go back and paint those and leave the bushings exposed, it's probably not that big a deal. But I do want to get it get it painted so it looks a little bit more in the appropriate color for a shipment in that era. 
and then we'll get it back on. I'll probably do some work on this, paint it a little bit. Um, I'll probably go ahead and airbrush the conservator tank as well and the uh, the PTs. I'm assuming they're PTs. That's kind of what they, what they look like. And then we will get it back together, secure it to the car. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I mean, the dunnage looks okay. I mean, that's fine. And this might be a little bit of a large car for this transformer, but I don't think it looks that bad. It's certainly plausible. I mean, there's no reason they couldn't put it on on a, on a 70 ton flat. It probably would fit on a 50 ton on this one here, but maybe this is what the customer wanted. And maybe what I'll do is I'll put some other, you know, uh, crates on it, some barrels of oil for top off oil and whatnot. So there's other things you can put on the car, not because of the weight, just so there's space. So the customer gets it in one shipment. So, okay, enough bibbly babbling. Let me go ahead and get this ready and then get this thing airbrushed uh, and then uh, continue on. So more to come. All right, getting ready here. Just figured I'd show this just for shits and giggles. So here, uh, that's what I'm going to be using. There's the uh, strong dark blue AK Interactive Gen 3 paint. I'm going to use, thin it with uh, their acrylic thinner. About 50-50. You can go 70-30. I'll probably start 50-50. And then maybe a drop of retarder. Although this won't be a real long session. It's not a lot to paint. Uh, the airbrush that I'm going to use is a Procon Boy. What does that say? I can't even read that. PS 289.3 millimeter uh, needle. I like this airbrush, double action. Very nice airbrush. That's what I like to use. I've been reaching for that one more and more. I do have an Iwata Revolution. I also have an Iwata TRM1, uh, the trigger style, which I do enjoy. I like that type. But this is the one I tend to be reaching for. So I'm going to, and all I'm going to do is just mix it up right here in the in the cup. I mean, it's, it's plenty. You know, I'm not painting a lot. I'm just going to paint that so it's not like i need a whole lot of paint what i do tend to do on some paints if i'm going to use them a lot i will mix them in a separate bottle like this and then try to label this is this is my prr fade so this is my pensy fade color don't ask me what it is because i don't remember and there's not much left so i'm in a little bit of trouble but then i'll mark it and this way it's pretty much ready to go already mixed thinned out and ready to go all right, anyway, so let's get this uh, fired up, and let's see if I can get this successfully painted. All right, more to come. All righty, here we go. So I got it airbrushed. And I think it, I do like this color a lot better. This is a lot more realistic um, and prototypical. Now, I tried, I'm not the world's greatest airbrusher. I did try to get in between the radiators there and on the bottom, and, you know, it... it <laughs> it's fine at layout distance it'll look okay and you can see i got the conservator tank painted and then i got the pts painted i'll have to redo the dunnage which is fine and uh, i think it looks okay it's not bad so and i will i will have to paint the bushings up top there if i uh, decide to leave them open like that i do have a chocolate brown color and then maybe give the whole thing a gloss coat. Because when they ship, they're usually painted nice and glossy out of the factory. So overall, I think it... Uh, let's see if the light's any better. Not really. Kind of a harsh light here. So that's it. And I'm not going to do a whole lot more to it. I'm not going to worry about adding a whole bunch of valves to it. Which I would do on a larger transformer. Because they're ubiquitous and a lot of people miss those. I'm just not going to worry about it on this one. Because it's, it's going to be so hard to see. So... Let that dry up, and then we'll get it ready to go uh, back into the dunnage. Speaking of, let me just zoom over here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. What I'm going to do for this, actually, let me bring it over here. Better light. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to take that out, and I'm going to give it a light coat of the Vallejo Hobby Spray uh, German Field Gray. That's kind of a nice grayish, you know, old woodish type thing, thing, color. And then what I can do is come in and put some maybe some washes on it to uh, make that look a little bit more like the wood that I'm used to seeing, uh, at least in my mind. It, it just looks a little bit too, I don't know, too tanny, orangey to me. So I'm going to do that quick. 
and let that dry up and then uh, continue on forging ahead here. All right, more to come. All right, making some progress here. This is uh, not done yet, but this is how things are probably going to look. So I got the transformer. You can see it's sitting there, there on, the, on the one side of the car with the conservator tank. Oh, my finger to the far end. The uh, PT's there. And I'm not, not going to put the, um, the bushings where they were originally located, which was right here. I just might put some pieces of dunnage there or something like that. So over here is a bunch of uh, barrels of oil kind of made into a, an arrangement to keep things from rolling around. Here's a crate. It's got some dunnage around it, again, to kind of keep it secure to the car so it doesn't go haywire. Uh, this I made up with uh, nine barrels there, and then I just kind of got some all scrap, all scrap lumber out of, out of my... Uh, box of rocks and I decided to to make that and then the reason is if I go over here so here's a prototype photo of a much older unit leaving the, the Sharon factory it's on a Pennsylvania uh, flat car an FM car for those Pensy fans out there you see the unit is here on the right hand side and then if you look it's got and again I get some light on this Here's that crate sitting across the car. That's why I put the crate on. Here are the barrels. There's some barrels here. There's some barrels here. I assume it's transformer oil. You can see it's got some cribbing over them that, you know, probably keep them from rolling. On, on both of these, it does. Here's the Westinghouse sign. Now, that's an older era. I call that the pre-war era. I'm going to put the one that's post-war. I do have those. I got custom decals for it. So, oops. So I'm going to make that up. And then that's why on this car, I went ahead, and let's get the light back on it here. So I put the transformer to one end, and I'm going to have the conservator, the PT, or the, uh, I, I guess they're PTs, that's what I'm calling them. The oil here in the barrels, and then the crate here at the end. And I'm going to put the Westinghouse sign probably right now, I might scooch these around a little bit. Um, put the Westinghouse sign right in here. Um, it's just, it looks like it's on a piece of wood nailed to the deck. So I'll, I'll do the same. I won't nail it to the deck, but I'll do something very similar. So that's where we are right now. So now I need to get uh, get things secured to the car. I think I'm just going to use a dab or two of canopy glue uh, for the crate, for the drums of oil, and even for the transformer itself. That way, if I ever really wanted to and I'm careful about it, I could... Pull them back off, but I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it too much. This will be a uh, load of car, ready to rock and roll out of the factory before too long here. So I'll get some light on it. So that's how it's looking so far. So uh, let me do a little bit more noodling around, get the load secure. I do have to put some tie rods down because everyone I've looked at, you go back to the prototype photo, and it's not easy to see, and I apologize for the terrible video here. Uh, every one of them had tie rods, four tie rods. So I took a piece of 010 uh, Titchy Phosphor Bronze Wire, spray painted it Panzer Gray. I don't know if it's going to stay that color. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do it because there's, there's no, uh, you know, lift lugs or tie down lugs here on the transformer. They probably would have done something temporary, either welded them on or there actually should be something on this transformer because I don't see how they're going to lift it. There should be lifting lugs. So maybe I could add a small little, um, I don't know, a, you know, a loop or something like that to make it look like a lifting lug and then use that. The way they do it is they normally come up with a tie rod, go through the lifting lug, and there's an angle behind it, and it's all bolted together. And then it comes down to the car. So some, I'll come up with some way to put four tie rods on it uh, to get this secured down to the, to the rail car itself. So, okay, more to come as we... Uh, Forge ahead. Getting close, though. Getting close. Well, that looks pretty cool so far. Okay, we're not done yet, but we're getting there. Alrighty, we are getting close here. Not quite done, but the uh, the unit is uh, secured to the car on its dunnage. I have the other boxes and the barrels here all made up. Now, they're not glued on yet, and all I'm going to do is put a dab 
<laughs> See, I cheated. Use a piece of scrap siding to make a solid base. <laughs> Put a dab of canopy glue and then pop them on the car. That way, if I ever really, really need to, I probably can get them back off again. I'm not going to super glue them because then I'm, well, I would just destroy them. Not that I would like taking the car apart, but hey, you never know. These uh, crates are done. You know, uh, that's not going to show up, but they're ready to go. Those are, these are actually out of a, uh, where'd I put it? Here it is. I don't recall if I showed this before. These are out of an old Rusty Stumps horizontal crates, D6001. These are now available from Rail Scale Models. They brought them out. I think they bought out um, Rusty Stumps, most of his stuff. So they have a lot of good... Uh, Shipping crates, and they have skids, you know, pallets and whatnot. Good stuff. So I recommend them. I recommend you check them out. Rail scale models. So that's what these two crates are. They're a little fiddly to make, but they make up. You know, I think they look pretty darn nice. Um, so the units in there. Now I did add. You can see right there. I added some dunnage. Why I don't know. There was an open spot there, and I figured, you know, hey, maybe they got to crib this thing. When it gets on site before they get it into, into position so there's some donuts there now what i need to do you can see i need to do some touch-up paint there's a couple little <laughs> parts where i just can handle it and working with it it's got a little bit of just a few spots to do some touch-up i do have which will never show up on the camera but you can see that like a little fly there this is some o10 Titchy 010 phosphor, um, rod, phosphor bronze rod. Painted with Panzer Gray. I don't know how well it's going to stay when I start, you know, cutting it and bending it and trying to fit it on. And then I did, I don't know if it's going to show up. Let's see if I get the light over here. On the end of the transformer, I drilled, let's see, right there. Is that going to focus? See it there? I put four eyelets in there. Uh, drilled number 80 holes very carefully, but a very, very small dab of glue at the end of the, they're plastic from, uh, I don't know where they're from. They're either Titchy, Grant Line, or I, I don't know. I, I really, they're just in a, in a drawer I have that's got all kinds of stuff. And it's, they were there they were, and it looked about the right size. So, uh, what I'm going to do then is take the, aforementioned phosphor bronze rod it's gonna what i really should do but what i don't think i am gonna do if you look here gentle viewer at the prototype car and if this all right i need to get the light the heck out of my way because i can't i can't even walk and chew gum at the same time let alone hold a camera a light and try to focus it all right right there that's a tie rod coming through and if you can notice, I have nothing to point with. Look at here. Piece of strip wood. What they have here on the very bottom is a, is a piece of angle. So the tie rod, you know, probably comes through the, the uh, stake pocket on the car, through the angle. There's a nut and a bolt, or a nut, nut and a washer here, not on a bolt. You know, and they use that to secure it here. And then up top, uh -huh, same thing. It looks like on a lot of these, they put some temporary stuff where they could bring it up with a plate, bring the rod through, and then bolt it up. And there's another one over here. If you can see that, there's the angle piece right there. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. Now, this car, this Pensy Flat, has got flat bottom stake pockets. This New York Central car has got angled ones. And I did see other prototype photos of Westinghouse units loaded on cars like that. And they didn't use an angle, they just used a, a flat piece, I don't know, maybe like a half inch thick, you, you know, a, a, what, a four by six inch piece of flat stock uh, that was kind of pulled in then. But you know what, I'm just not going to worry about it because A, I don't feel like it, and B, I'm not sure it's going to be worth the effort. So I'm just going to take this phosphor bronze and probably, you know, put it in the stake pocket. Like this. this is probably not focusing at all is it and then put a dab of super glue there real small to glue it in and then somehow try to bring it up bend it if i need to 
put a you know a, the appropriate angle on it. it might not be a 90 and then try to you know get it into the eyelets on the top of the of the unit so from the eyelet down to the stake pocket and then a little dab of super glue up here oh, boy it wiggles oh it wiggles when I, if i can get it through there and not lose my sanity and not use all kinds of harsh language i will try to get it through and then down in the stake pocket little dab of super glue there really really tiny dab of super glue up here good enough and we'll see then i'll do all you know obviously four corners all four sides of it and then that's going to look i think pretty darn good um okay so that's that's where we are so a little bit more work to do and the, the biggest thing oh i did do i also i forgot to mention folks i did get my westinghouse signs made up uh they are my custom decals out of my custom decal set which i happen to have right here now, the other larger ones are for bigger transformers obviously and you can see how some of the pre-war and the post-war and even some of the do not hump this car although unfortunately I really need, to need those to be at about half size. I think I do see them on the cars, you know, facing the way, facing the ends. But the ones here are too big. Right, anyway, not, not a huge deal. I don't think anyone's going to kick me out of the model railroad club if I uh, don't have those on the car. But those are ready to go. They're going to go probably right, <laughs> right here. One on this side. And then one on the opposite side facing out. I think that's going to look pretty cool. Because uh, they are prototypical, prototypically correct for the right era. They are the actual Westinghouse. Uh, I, co I copied them out of the photographs from units. So I think that's going to be a pretty nice looking little load there. Again, not a real big transformer. But again, they shipped a lot of this stuff out of here. And in fact, I should have a lot more of these than, than the larger transformers. In fact... There's other photos of this. There's another car with the two sister units. So there's, you know, one car here with a unit and all the accoutrements. There's another car with two of these, one on each kind of, you know, one on each end of the car. And that, you know, that was three units going out. Maybe there are three single phase units. I'm not sure. Uh, could very well be. So, again, there's a lot more of these, you know, smaller units that go out. I've seen you know a lot of pictures. I should probably do a video on that just to show you what things look like. You know what the prototypical loads look like coming out. And these are what's really cool about it is that these are accurate prototypical for the mid 1950s, which you don't see. You see a lot of transformer pictures, but they're all modern stuff. Not many people have access to you know 1950s, or this is even earlier. This is probably a pre-war, pre-World War II. Uh, shipment coming out you can kind of tell by the the Westinghouse emblem that's there so okay enough babbling I really started babbling on this segment but we're getting close I like it I think it's gonna be a good looking you know little more you know normal type transformer load coming out of the factory so all right Whew, more to come let me get these tie rods on hopefully and uh, we'll get this car wrapped up and over at the factory all righty here we go I'm going to call it done. I got the tie rods on. Very, very, oh, that was tedious. What I did was I basically bent the upper end. And I don't know how well this will all focus here. So that, uh, that focus, that upper end is, has a little bit of a, almost a 90 on it. And then I kind of brought it down as best I could into the stake pocket, put a tweezer on it. So I knew where to cut it, cut it with my little uh, nippers and then came back and tried to get the part up into the little eye bolt and then set into the stake pocket, which was an adventure. <laughs> Damn little thing wants to flick around and come out and fly everywhere. But once I got them in, I then put a dab of super glue up top around the eyelet. And then a dab of super glue down at the stake pocket. It's not perfect. It's not prototypical in that that's not how they would have done it. But you know what? Whatever. Oh, I'm just glad it's done. So all four of those are 
are on the car, or on the transformer to the car. And you know, I think at, at layout distance, it's gonna look fine. Yeah, if I go in really close, and this phone may not, let me get too close with, with decent focusing. You can tell, it's, and it's not right the way they secured them to the top of the transformer. It's not right the way I put them into this, just kind of stuck them in there with no angle or flat piece at the bottom. But again, you know what? When this car is sitting back in the factory or rolling by on the main line in a train, you're, you're going to see it and say, oh, it's tied down. Cool. And then I have the other, like I said, the barrels and the two boxes are on with just a little dab of uh, Formula 560 canopy glue. Why? Well, general viewer, A, because it's it's um, it dries clear. And B, it's not necessarily permanent. It, it stays a little bit flexible. So if I ever had to, and, and even the transformers down that way. Of course, now the tie rods are super glued, but they're small enough that I could just, you know, not cut them off. That way, if I really ever wanted to, and I don't know why I would, but, and even the sign, same thing on the sign. I put a little 4x4 four four in the back. I don't know if that'll show up. I'll try to show that in a moment. Uh, and they're all glued down with just a little dab of uh, canopy glue. Like I said, on the signs, I did come in after work and I uh, put a little bit of satin finish on them. You can see there's a little bit of a, maybe not. <laughs> I put a, little, a four by piece behind it there, saying that you know, that's what they would they would nail into. They probably wouldn't wouldn't use a four by, but whatever. I mean, sometimes a model rare you gotta put stuff in that you can actually physically handle. Um, so they nailed through that under the deck, which is certainly what it looks like they did. Again, back here on this one, you can see the sign there, and it looks like they're just, just some wood. Again, I think it's a wood, probably a piece of plywood with the sign on it. And then they, they just kind of blah, 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 did some you know pieces down here, nailed it to the car. So that's what I did. I just come, I went blah, 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 and nailed it to the real car. <laughs> so, so that's it. So there's kind of the top view. So you got your oil. You got boxes of uh, probably bushings, the high bushings in the bigger box. One's got maybe, I don't know, other stuff in it for the for the customer to connect it. You know, some, you know, cables and connectors and uh, t bushing terminals and whatnot. You have the PTs. You got a little bit of dunnage here uh, for jacking, sliding, whatever. You got the transformer. You got the conservator tank. And it's ready to go. Now, what I'm probably going to do after this one, since I kind of like the way this turned out, on the other core that I have right here, or maybe a different one, I don't know if I'll use the same, another New York Central one, although I could, I actually have one more of these, and for those interested, this Artitech Transformer is available on eBay. Go into eBay, however you prefer to go search, you know, I, I go into Model Rarity and then Train, something like that, search for Artitech Click on HO scale, if that's the scale you're in, and it, they come up. Now, I just bought one, because <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is probably on this other flat car, like I mentioned on the other segment, you know, with this prototype one here, there's another car with two more transformers on it. So, ah, that gives me an idea. So, what I'll probably do then is take two more and put one on, you know, two on this car. One on this end, one on this end. Probably won't have all the additional baggage, but I'll take them off and I'll paint them and uh, use the same dunnage, set them on the car, probably have the pretty much the same thing, just, just two more units on the car. Make up two more signs for the center of the car again, uh, if they did it that way. I'll have to go back and look and see if, if both of the cars in this shipment or other shipments that I've seen, do all the cars have... The sign, or if they're going together, just as one car. Because heaven forbid, I don't want to do it unprototypically, because that would cause all kinds of problems with the master model railroaders. All right, so <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <clears throat> there it is. So it's done. So enough babbling. Nice uh, couple evening project. I like it. I think that really looks good. And what really, to me, what really makes it nice and that i like it is a the color of the transformer is as accurate as i can get it for the era 
and the prototypical Westinghouse mid 1950s signage. That just looks cool. You don't see that a lot on today's shipments, but back in the era, you did. I mean, Westinghouse did it, GE did it, Alice Chalmers did it. I'm sure McGraw, McGraw, or Pennsylvania Transformer McGraw did it. Uh, Central Maloney probably did it. It's just cool, you know. It just looks. It just adds some some flavor to the uh, to the model. It makes it look, you know, era appropriate. All right, there we go. So, uh, what's next? Well, I think I'm going to do a bigger transformer. Maybe I'll show a little teaser picture of the next one I want to get done because I already have it painted. Anyway, th that'll be coming up. Maybe I'll put a maybe I'll put a picture up just to tease you all. <laughs> Okay, guys, that's it. That is the uh, transformer load, at least one of the two cars I'm going to do for the shipment out of the Westinghouse Transformer Factory. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it.